Today, we're going to talk about how blockchains can update democracy itself. We're going to sit down with Santiago Siri of Democracy Earth to see the platform that he's building to make that happen. Are you ready to see the future? Let's go. As a little kid, I suffered the hyperinflation in the late 80s. Uh, then I suffered the, the country defaulting uh, in 2001. Uh, later on, the, the rise of inflation back again. Um, rampant unemployment uh, when we don't get inflation. Uh, so it's uh, every kind of financial crisis, uh, you get to go through it. And that has led that the first generation of Argentines that grew in a democracy, that grew up with the internet, are now seriously uh, considering implementing innovations using blockchain-based technology. That led me to start a political party there, and uh, our plan was a Trojan attack, to change the system from within with a new kind of political party. I got to discover an extremely corrupt political system uh, that really tries to sometimes even use violence to scare you away. And uh, you end up thinking that, you know, if you try to change the system from within, it's very likely that you will end up being changed by the system first. So uh, when we went to San Francisco and we started Democracy Earth, we changed our philosophy to build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, what we're seeing with these networks is that we're building this new possibility that is the institutional possibility of the internet. The internet changed culture, changed communication, and now it's gonna change the very logic of institutions. Let us t tell us a little bit about the early stages of that development, how you started to actually think through applying blockchain to political process or political reform or whatever. So when we started the political party, our first step was uh, to make a party with a very simple ideology. That was to have candidates that are committed to vote in Congress always according to what people decide online. Um, so that led us to try to figure out what kind of software was the right kind of software to engage democratic participation uh, from society. Our first step uh, in the design of that software was that it had to be open source. Anyone should be able to scrutinize uh, how that software works. Um, but very soon you start discovering also the weak points of having a centralized authority or a centralized server uh, tallying the votes of any given election. Um, for example, we faced with our first version of our software um, that uh, the database admins, the administrators of the servers, uh, when they had a preference on the outcome of a given election, they could uh, either delay the registration of certain users or accelerate the registration of other users. So those central points of failures are always a risk. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how voting uh, applying blockchain to voting um, helps alleviate some of the pain points of traditional voting. So when you look at uh, elections, uh, there are two main ways to subvert a democratic process. Um, one is uh, gossip, what is now known as fake news, uh, dissemination of false information. Uh, and I certainly think that blockchains in that respect, uh, since blockchains are automated bureaucracies that are institutional uh, you know, promises being stored in these cryptographic ledgers can help uh, 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 reduce a little bit of the impact of gossip in electoral processes. Uh, the other aspect is um, manipulation of the voter registry. Uh, in traditional elections, it's very common to find dead people registered to vote. Um, in digital elections, uh, whoever controls the database uh, can control who gets to register and participate in the electoral process. So what we're trying to achieve at Democracy Earth is building a democratic consensus uh, that uh, defines who gets the right to participate in our network or not. And this democratic consensus um, needs to basically answer two key things in order to make sure that participation in digital environments is trustworthy. One is making sure that the participants getting both in uh, are actually humans. Uh, in social media, we have a lot of manipulation from AIs, from bots, yeah. uh, from you know, multiple accounts being held by a single person. So um, definitely uh, arriving into a consensus that the participants on a 
uh, democratic network are actual humans is, is very important. The other is preventing a single entity from controlling multiple keys to participate in the electoral process. So a democracy earth world building mechanisms to establish a distributed democratic consensus on who gets the right to participate in our network and uh, build with that uh, a decentralized uh, a ledger of self-sovereign identities that can also work as a public resource for any organization to tap into. Sure. What's uh, so like when we talk about voting? Um, you know, you can vote at the ballot. But you can also vote with your wallet or vote with your feet. What's the human learning curve to uh, prevent, uh, eventually getting to a place where you know people are you know voting from their phones uh, on a number of issues? We're actually voting every day already. Yeah. Uh, whether we like it or not, we're influencing political campaigns. Uh, through uh, clicking the like button on Facebook or through clicking the retweet button on, on Twitter. The problem with that kind of voting is that uh, it has no institutional impact whatsoever. It's only indirectly influencing the outcome of elections and it's ultimately benefiting the owners of those networks. So we need to tokenize the like. We need to have uh, a way of making voting a part of our everyday life uh, but also in a way that can trigger institutional change, that can trigger uh, better outcomes for society and provide more transparency in the functioning of our institutions. Let's take it back and talk about democracy. Demos, Kratos, people's force. What we need to do is not talk about democracy as just voting, but all the ways in which we impact the world around us. For Santiago, the aim was to take social media away from serving advertisers toward having institutional impact. They've done this by releasing their own vote token for everyone to use on their platform. You can stake tokens onto your political ideas. These tokens form an economy of their own, moving between active members and rewarding genuine discussion leaders. The key to success is to implement this in companies, organizations, local and national governments. And if it works, there'd be no more election day. You could use your tokens to interact with politics every day. <clears throat> so I'll make you a demo of uh, Democracy Earth. This is not released, so yeah. work in progress. But the first thing you will realize we are trying to give like a, a very social media-like experience. Mm -hmm. uh, social media is definitely the place where we get to uh, engage in political debate. We're not asking for personal information, so in order to sign in, it's very simple. You just uh, use your MetaMask wallet and you sign uh, with your par private key your public address and by signing you just log in into the system. No email, no personal information was ever requested for you to participate in, in the network itself. Yeah. Um, so then you can start posting something uh, like uh, should, uh, should uh, Bitcoin uh, be legal in Venezuela? Uh, let's say, let's write something like that. And uh, I can, uh, for this particular decision, I can uh, say, well, let's make this something only uh, Venezuelans vote. Uh, mm. Or uh, I can even restrict it if you have put your email uh, on the system by, by the domain name of the email itself. Mm. So this, this is something only Venezuelans will vote. Yeah. And then I can decide which, which token can you participate on this decision. So we support any kind of ERC20 token on the Ethereum network. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, I just use Democracy Earth token. I can put what address do I want the votes to get received, how many tokens required per vote, and once you're ready, you post it. And uh, an interesting thing is that you can start having these debates. For example, someone can say, well, I'll donate all if here uh, for the cause. And I'll just uh, make a, a reply that instead of using Democracy Earth tokens, uh, uses Ethereum tokens uh, and I can even request like a, a higher amount of it. Uh, so you can start having these discussions uh, where the concept of uh, just liking and retweeting now has yeah. this economic component. Yeah. And we hope that this will lead to uh, structuring micro and macro organizations yeah. that can live uh, on networks empowered by blockchain based tokens. So what's going on under the hood when you hit vote? So what we're doing is integrating our network right now to the Ethereum blockchain. Um, 
uh, this case is like a large transaction to like using the MetaMask wallet to send it, broadcast the transaction into the Ethereum network. Uh, let's just try like um, I don't have enough funds here, so I'll, I'll just make a, a, a small transaction. Uh, like let's see, sign, sign me up, and I'll just uh, for the sake of uh, using Ethereum in this case, I can make a small amount here. Um, and once I post this, then I click on, I just send tokens to this particular ID on, on, that has this address on the blockchain. So I click on my MetaMask uh, wallet, I'll confirm the transaction, and that transaction gets broadcasted into the network. Uh, now if I check the console here, um, I can see the information related to that transaction. I have to look for it here. Well, I have a lot of messages uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of showing me what's going on yeah uh, but here you can see uh, all the transactions is confirmed and I can you know yeah. go back to etherscan and just check on etherscan you know what's going on with with that token or, or in this case with ethereum when the transaction got broadcasted right. uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, making the interaction with tokens a more of a daily thing uh, and you know spawn networks that can uh, really make uh, you know governance through through the use of tokens uh, a, a daily habit. Yeah, and would you also be able to have a mobile uh, app? For this yes, uh, absolutely. Like uh, everything we do is uh, also taking into consideration mobile design. Cool. So you can see uh, if I yeah. resize my screen, yeah. uh, immediately the the whole app will be formatted for a mobile screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are uh, we try to make sure that absolutely everything every single feature also works yeah in all all types of screens yeah that's the challenge that's of great. democracy sure so I, I know the approach is like very user centered like what are some of the ways in which you're you're thinking about improving things for for users so as a first step for us is uh, certainly we want to improve uh, the social media like experience yeah. right now is you know just text and we are taking some hints from the ux of twitter and facebook and yeah. reddit and other uh, popular platforms out there where political discourse happens sure. um, and certainly the whole on-chain activity related to our own token to the vote token that we're issuing yeah. um, we want to include functionality so we can effectively allow for delegation of votes, mm. which means this is a kind of transaction that I can give you the vote to you, but uh, whenever I want to, I, w I can revoke that delegation uh, and get my tokens back. Uh, so those new kinds of uh, yeah. transactions, we need to design those, yeah. particularly on the smart contract of our token. Uh, we're waiting for a lot of the decentralized infrastructure like IPFS yeah. and all of those networks so we can uh, not rely strictly on Amazon Web Services yeah. and you know uh, incentivate to build a, a de decentralized web where the assets are really in control of uh, all of us and not just a handful of companies in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Blockchain has the potential to completely change our political system, but how will governments respond? Till next time.